almost every Saturday and Sunday and quite often during the week. The fellows enjoy getting out, flying, having a great time with model aviation. So we hope you enjoyed this segment of our presentation and we'll be showing you some flying sequences coming up out at the field in a moment. Thank you. Hi, we're out at the flying field now. We have the trainer airplane hooked up. On the end of the lead outs, we put on some steel cables. These are 18,000 in diameter and 60 feet in length. I hope you can hear me over the competition. The trucks, the freeway runs right next to the flying site. So we're all set to go. The engine has been, the tank's been fueled. The battery is out. We look under the glow plug. We'll start flipping it. My son Paul will hold the airplane and release it for me. And then we'll put in a flight showing you what you can do with one of these beginner type trainer airplanes. Okay? Hey.
there you saw a little bit of control line flying with a basic, simple, profile, beginner's type airplane that is capable of doing a few maneuvers and yet is stable. Those maneuvers I were flying was flying at the wrong side of the circle because of the sun. I had to do that on the upwind side, which is even more difficult. So you can see what fun it is that you can have by doing some control lines flying. Now we're going to take you down and we'll do a little bit of RC flying. One of the things that happens, and many people ask as they get into radio control modeling, is do these ever crash? Well, unfortunately, you can have a problem arise that can be mechanical or could be something that you hadn't anticipated. And that beautiful little airplane that we saw earlier this morning, Kramer was putting in a test flight here before we shot some footage of it, and it had a slight mishap. And that is really sad to see something like that happen. But this is one of the things that takes place whenever we're modeling, and it can happen, is that, yes, whenever you have something that's mechanical and electronically controlled, you can have a mishap. So if you are fearful or the kind of person that is fearful of having a mishap or having a problem take place, maybe model airplanes aren't for you, and you perhaps should look into something a little bit safer of which there are a lot of fine modeling sports that don't have this. Uh, boating is one. So that is a real tragedy that I know Kermit will be able to get it put back together again, but unfortunately we're going to miss seeing this fine flying airplane. Any comments, Kermit? Well, it's, it looks like it's repairable, but it's going to take a little bit of work. It'll be uh, a few days before it flies again. Thanks, Kermit. Hi, here we are down at the flying field in Modi. We've got the church midwing out here. What I'll be doing now is going through a series of maneuvers just as though we were at a contest, flying scale. At a scale contest, what you have to do is make your model airplane, fly those maneuvers that the full-size airplane would have been able to have flown as realistically as possible. So I'm going to fire up here now. Now this plane doesn't taxi very well, and we have a bit of a crosswind, which would cause the tail to come around, so I may have to kind of give it a little help out to the runway. So we're going to fire up, take off, and I'll be calling some maneuvers out, and then Kermit will be repeating the maneuvers that I will be doing. Landy is getting himself positioned to take off, He's opening the throttle. Again, because this is a very slow, low power type airplane, takeoff is very slow and gradual. There's Landy in position to start his maneuvers. Now turning the airplane around. Here comes the airplane in for its first maneuver. That maneuver 
as a flyby, straight down the runway. Now he's turning around, getting set up for his next maneuver. That pass was just for trimming. Make sure the airplane was all in adjustment, ready to fly. Not would be doing flyby. He would be doing in a contest. It's straight and level, right down the middle of the runway. As slow and as realistic as you can make it. Getting the airplane set up, and now he's starting his flyby. This airplane flies very slowly and realistically. Very smooth, stable flying out. Here you can get an idea of the perspective of the airplane, how low it is to the ground. Next you'll be doing a flat figure eight. It's a, if you drew a figure on the top of your table, it would be shaped like a figure eight. Quarter of a turn. And now back the other direction to the left. Full turn. And you can get a perspective of how high he is from the ground. Down pretty low. Very smooth, low, flat turn. Now there's maybe one complete turn. And you turn back the other way and make a complete turn the other direction. I'm sure on the screen this looks pretty fast but in actuality the airplane is only flying at about 30 or 40 miles an hour. Again he's getting position to do another maneuver. His next maneuver is going to be a loop. This is a maneuver where the airplane does a complete circle starting at the bottom Going up over the top in, in a loop. Okay, we'll pull back so you can get a perspective of what this looks like from a distance. He's diving to get up airspeed. Now the airplane goes up and over. And back down again. And he flies out, makes a circle around. Next maneuver is going to be a roll. This is where the airplane gets to roll over on side and completely rolls over a full 180 degrees. Closing close on the airplane so you can get an idea of what the airplane looks like. It's just flying straight, but rolling right around its own fuselage. So start his roll, getting your speed up. position to do another maneuver. This maneuver is going to be called a maneuver called the stall turn. The airplane goes straight up, hesitates, and almost stops in midair, turns completely around, and falls back the other direction. Okay, he's pulling up, pulling up, stops, falls around its own wingtip, and back down again. a maneuver called a split S. Yes. He's climbing for altitude. You can see he's up higher now than he has been. Getting higher, gaining altitude. A split S yes is a half roll followed by a half loop. following some of these maneuvers. Again, he's doing another stall turn, up and over. It's a beautiful maneuver when it's done well. He's getting set up again. This time he's going to fly by, from right to left, inverted, that is upside down. It's a maneuver that's a lot harder to do than it looks, especially with a, a low slow flying airplane such as this one. There he is rolling over. There he is coming by inverted. Up, up coming out the other side. 
side of the sun, he's still inverted. Turning around inverted. Again, this is much harder to do than it looks. This is a maneuver for very advanced pilots. Nothing for beginners to try. It takes a lot of experience to be able to do flying around inverted. All the controls are backwards. The elevator is backwards. The airplane's coming towards you. All your flying controls are backwards. There he is. Roll back up right here. Now he's getting, going to get in position for his landing. He's making a flying circuit around the field. Slowing down, making a nice gentle turn, getting in position to land. And again, this is a maneuver that's much harder than it looks. Very deceiving. You can see he's very close to the fence there, very slow. Very slow, very slow. Now he decided to do a touch and go. It's a landing and then it's followed by an immediate takeoff. This particular airplane does beautiful touch and goes and landings. It's got a scale type landing gear that is shot loaded with rubber bands so that it springs up and down when the airplane goes across balls. Now he's decided to do a couple more maneuvers. I believe he's going to do a double stall turn. Up. At the top. Back the other way. Same thing. the sun. Come in for landing again. With this field, the fence is a particular hazard. You have to be very careful to miss that fence. Now he's throttling down, making his landing approach, coming in lower, lower, lower. Beautiful. Again, because it's a tail dragger type airplane, it does not taxi well on. This kind of conditions. Whoop. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing those flying sequences and getting a little bit of information about model aviation from hand launch gliders to rubber powered to rocketry, control line, and radio control. Do stop by the booth right here. Ask any questions that you may have about the different kinds of airplanes. We'll be glad to tell you about it, about the clubs in the area, the cost of getting into this fine hobby sport. Have a very fine day, and enjoy yourself, and keep them flying high. Now we're going to give you a quick little demonstration of how one of the really teeny little airplanes will fly. This is a little 5-inch glider, and he's going to throw it for you and show you that even the little, simple, inexpensive airplanes fly quite well. As the Can Can is playing, we see the World War I planes flying overhead, the French plane being chased by the Red Baron. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation that was just presented, those marvelous miniature flying models, as presented by Standard Hobbies. If you have any questions, why, ask us right here at the booth, and we'll be happy to try and give you whatever answers we possibly can, and how you can get into this wonderful, fantastic hobby sport model airplanes.
And while we're on biplanes, we have another segment coming up by Dr. Bob Keller, as he'll be flying his biplane, a Phaeton Bipe, powered by a OS-44 cycle. And he has to go through a snowstorm here. It's going down. Now he's coming through the storm. And listen to the engine of this Phaeton Bipe, this OS-44. Very realistic sounding model airplane engine. Take it out a little ways further, Kermit, so it's out of the sun area. If you're listening, you can hear the sound of this four-stroke, quite different than the regular two-cycle model engines. And Kermit is going through, giving it a few maneuvers here. Listen and enjoy this wonderful sound of this engine. Now he's going to do a snap. Those wonderful miniature model airplanes presented to you by Standard Hobbies. Standard Hobbies located in the Hammer Ranch Shopping Center in Stockton and 1321 West Lockford Street in Lowe's. 